Hello, friends. Welcome to the Leg Life Podcast. My name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Sherry Beth. We are on episode number... 15. All right. Go us. Go us. Now, this episode is going to be um, more serious than a lot of our past episodes. Yep. We're talking about something that has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, it's something that spurred a conversation on between Sherry and I a couple nights ago, and we thought, you know what? This might make a helpful uh, podcast. Interesting at any rate. Interesting at any mm-hmm. rate. Uh, so a lot of you guys will know about the Sarah Everard story. Uh, Sarah was the young British woman who was killed back, uh, gosh, just a, a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. I guess now, maybe almost a month ago. And it's raised a lot of conversation around the safety of women, around just all of that kind of stuff yeah. in society. And what Sharon and I started talking about were the things that she was taught to do to be safe as a woman and I'm listening to these things and I'm just like, what? Yeah. Like, it, it's it's so different than my experience. It's things that you were never actually taught that it wouldn't even occur to you to do. Um, and things that it's just it kind of ingrained in, in women from a very young age on how to keep ourselves safe. Well, honestly, that was one of the things that was so surprising to me is that as you were, the way you were talking about this, it was so matter of fact. It was almost like a, duh. These are things that I do. Of course, these are things that I do. Mm -hmm. And to me, like I had heard, because we've talked about this kind of stuff a lot before. So I had heard a lot of these, but there were things that like, it was just such a good reminder to me of how different our experiences are. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but also how helpful it is for me as a man to get the perspective and see what your experience is like. Because it does two things for me. It gives me a better understanding of what your life is like going through this world as a woman. Mm -hmm. But it also helps me know how I can be a better man. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so those are the kind of things we're going to talk about in this uh, this podcast. Now, right from the beginning, I do want to say a couple things. Um, We are going to talk about... we're, We're going to try to touch on this stuff carefully we're going to try to not use words that might uh that might be triggers for you for past trauma past abuse that sort of stuff but just Mm -hmm. know that that this topic does lend itself to those kind of things naturally right uh we're going to try to tread carefully with that kind of stuff but also there are some sort of associated topics that have to do with this that we're not going to touch on in this episode yeah we kind of we have a list in our phones of um you know, specifically for this podcast, like things we wanted to kind of touch on. And some of the things we ended up moving into a different note um, because we want to kind of expand on it a little bit more. And I, we kind of felt like it was more of its own topic. Yep. So there are things that women are taught to do and, and how to act that um, we will not be uh, touching on today. This is also not an exhaustive list. Like this is not every single possible thing that women are taught. Yeah. Um, just because that would be the longest podcast in the history of ever. So. Yeah. And we're also not going to talk about toxic masculinity, toxic femininity. We're going to talk about right. those things in a future podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so we're going to pretty much stay focused on the issue of things that women are taught uh, to be safe in society that are just so different than what, what I was taught as, as a young man. And so, so Sherry Beth, this conversation between you and I started again talking about the Sarah Everard uh-huh. uh, murder and, and just about how, you know, she was walking home late at night, which is something, and this is, I think, where I want to start this conversation, that even that thing, like walking home late at night, for me, is something I never would even give a second thought to. Um, like, I, yeah. I, would just, I would just go about my normal way. It's like, okay, I'll walk home. I'll see you guys later. But when you would even approach the concept of walking home, there are things you would do differently. I would consider not walking home (laughs) Uh Uh, to begin with. Um, And if that just wasn't an option, then there are things that I would do to try to protect myself because I don't know who is out there. So let's talk about some of those things that... uh, that you do, the things that you were taught, the things that other women were taught. And just, you know, we actually have asked some of our friends uh, as well. We sent out some text messages, some, some Instagram messages mm-hmm. today and just said, hey, uh, we're thinking about talking about this topic. Just want to hear a little bit about your experience. What were some of the things you were taught? So these are these are some things that, that kind of come from Sherry, but also like uh, a community of friends around us. Yeah, and I, I do want to kind of say like um, it is interesting that so we reached out to five mm-hmm. different women in our lives and asked them all the same question. And um, I had already compiled a list of things that I have been taught and things that I just do kind of almost like second nature. Um, 
And honestly, I think that there were three things that were added to the list. Well, that was so interesting for me is that when everybody's responses started to come in, they were all basically exactly the same. I already have that and that and that, but I'll add this one. And, and Yeah, and so it kind of just showed <laughs> that like this is – this isn't just a, oh, this was something Sherry was taught. It's like this is pretty widespread. And keeping in mind that really like I was raised in a very small community, a very small Amish community mm-hmm. in, in the Midwest – where we kept our doors unlocked, like our house doors. We very rarely locked them. Yeah, these aren't things you were taught because you were raised in Brooklyn. Right. Yep. Like, I was raised in a very, I mean, safe place, but yeah. I was still taught these for safety. Well, and it's interesting even you bringing that up because the people we reached out to for feedback on this were all raised in very different environments. Yep. And so, but even with different upbringings in different locations... Uh, what they were taught was all very similar. So Sherry, let's just kind of jump into some of this list and and I'm going to have some questions for you and we're going to dialogue around some of these things. Um, But I'm just, again, as Sherry and I were talking about this, it was helpful for me. Uh, And so I think, I think to me, even before we start this, one of the things that I'd like to say, if, if there are guys listening, I think it's helpful that like, this is a time that we listen, right? There's, there's a time to speak up and there's a time to shut up. And I think that when we're hearing about what women's experiences are like in this area, it's a good time to not justify and not defend and just like, listen. Yeah. Right. Because it's really helpful to say like, oh, that like, that's your experience. Like, this is what you were raised. And this right. Is... You don't get to say that that's not my experience because. It is. It is. <laughs> like, this Completely. is actually things that I do and actually things that I was taught to do. So tell us about those things. Um. So really the, the first one um, that came to mind as I was kind of really starting to like compile this list is um, carrying keys between the knuckles of my fingers Mm -hmm. so that like the sharp point of the keys are all sticking out. Um, And that's how you walk to your car. Okay. Um, Parking under a streetlight, if at all possible, so that you can see Hmm. into your car. So just kind of like avoiding dark, like avoiding dark spaces in general. Yep. Man. Um, checking the back seat of your car before you get in. And this is something that he was like, what? Um, I do this with my car sitting in our car park, carport with the cameras on it. Like, well, And you even said that, you, like, this is so, so ingrained to you that you even do it when we're together. Yes. I always, always check the back seat of the car before I get in. I, um, wow. Because you don't know who could have broken in your car and is laying in wait. Sure. Like, and some of this, you know, it might just sound paranoid, but like, it, I mean, it's things that I'm taught because we live in a in a not safe society. Yeah. Um, locking your car doors as soon as you get in. Like, don't get in the car and then, like, fumble around with your purse and your phone and your whatever or, like, set your music. Like, get in, lock the doors, and then do all of that. Okay. Um, because people can get in your car. Um, walk. If, you're, if you have to walk um, somewhere, walk with your cell phone set to 911 like literally dial in 911 and have your phone have your hand like hovering over the call um or be on a call with somebody or pretend to be so you're Mm. actually actively talking to somebody um walk in groups when you can um always let somebody know where you are where you're going and when you get home um Keep your hand over your drink in a bar yeah. at all times. Don't ever leave your drink unattended. And if you do, you're done with the drink. Well, like you buy a new one. I want to touch on this a little bit because I, some of you guys will know I was a bartender for uh, for a little while and, and loved that job. I thought it was really great. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I noticed this happening. And it was so interesting because at a night at a bar, you watch men and women operate when it comes to their drinks completely different. Mm-hmm. And... Um, like, I would watch a guy order a drink, set it on a table, and then, like, walk away and go talk to another group of people and come back five minutes later. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just, like, start a drink again. Mm-hmm. Um, but you watched girls who would keep their hand over their drink or keep, like, a napkin over their drink or, like, make sure their drink was always in their possession. Or, or and if they were, if they did walk away to, like, go dance, like, one of their friends guarded their drinks. Right. You know, it was, it was completely different. Even the way we handled, uh, like, ordering a drink at a bar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, checking mirrors and sinks for the red light of a camera in bathrooms. Crazy. Um, and checking the mirror to make sure that it's not a, a two-way mirror. That's one of the things you were telling me earlier tonight is that, like, you'd put your finger up to a mirror. Yep. And if there was, like, a... Like, if you could... If you were touching your reflection, then... It it's, was... it's a two-way. 
No, if you were touching your reflection, then it was like a normal mirror. Mm -mm. But... If, if there's a gap between, if you touch your finger to the mirror and there's a gap between where your reflection is, mm -hmm. then it's a normal mirror. Oh, interesting. If there's not a gap, then it is a two-way. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Um, carrying, you know, pepper spray, a taser, a gun, if you need to, um, just kind of keeping those kinds of protection things on you at all times mm -hmm. and protection devices by your bed as well. If okay. you are alone, that's, that was the kind of incomprehensive list. So a couple questions I have about this stuff. Yeah. Are these things that like being raised, are these things that you're like sit, sat down and like taught, are these things that you just like pick up? culturally are these things that groups of friends talk about is it a combination of, of all of that combination like, of all of that okay yeah um i don't i don't think we ever like sat down and had like the talk um of like how to keep yourself safe yeah um but there it's it's things that are just ingrained from like a very young age um and then you know obviously there's like the self-defense classes and there's all those kinds of things as well and it's so interesting to me because there's not a single thing on that list whether it was from parents or society or friend groups or anything, there's nothing on that list that was taught to me or told to me. Right. Every single thing on that list is foreign to what my experience was. Now, granted, I'm a big guy. Right. But still, it doesn't have to do with the fact that I'm a big guy. It has to do with the fact that like you're a guy i'm a guy right right so like are there anything like growing up was there anything that you were taught on safety like <sighs> i i think like the things we were taught on safety and i told Sherry this earlier um was you know maybe like avoiding certain parts of town or maybe avoiding like if i was out walking um and there was just like a an individual walking you know 10 yards behind me like i'm not thinking anything of it Right? Totally mm -hmm. normal. Not concerned, not scared, nothing. Um, if there's like a group of people behind me. You're going to think twice. I'm going to start, the thought's going to start crossing my mind about like, I'm not here to get jumped. Right. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, other than that, no, like I, I've i never checked the backseat of my car. Like I've <laughs> never checked a, a mirror or looked for the red light. I've never held my keys the only time I put my keys between my fingers is when I'm faking that I'm Wolverine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like legit, that's it. I for... mean, that's the thought behind it. Well, completely. But it's like, for but me, it's, it's a joke. For, like, women, that can be a reality. Right. And so I think that, I think that to me, um, it's just been really eye-opening to hear the thought process that you would go through mentally when walking home. Or when parking your car at night mm -hmm. or when going somewhere or like there are steps that you have to take mentally that never cross my mind. And even things like calling an Uber or a Lyft or a taxi like that. Those are it's something that makes me nervous every time. Mm -hmm. um, Does it make you nervous when we're together? No. So this is one of the things we were talking about is that. Uh, there have been times when, you know, we're down to one vehicle um, and we both have somewhere to be. And so we have to call, you know, one of us to take an Uber and a Lyft. And it's just like an understood that it's me because of like right. the safety, right? Like for me, I would, if I didn't have a car and I had to take Uber every day, like I, I feel totally safe with that. Right. But for you, like one Uber ride by yourself and like there's hesitation in that. There is hesitation. And so I just, you know, there's, there's hesitation in even booking it. But then, like, almost a a relief when my Uber driver's a woman. Like, I remember getting an Uber in, um, I think, Salt Lake City uh -huh. uh, to go to a conference that we were at. Right. Everybody else had gone ahead of me, and I wasn't feeling well, so I stayed back at the house, and then I went later. And so I called an Uber, and I was super nervous to do it, and uh, it was a woman who, who came and picked me up, and I was like, okay, I'm good. Like You're like, oh, thank God. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, uh, I don't like that. I don't like having to think about that and having to always be forward thinking about my safety. So one of the, one of the thoughts, and this is just kind of how my brain works, um, because we're sharing how we're having this conversation and I'm realizing, and not, not, not like I'm just now realizing it's like, this is all stuff that I've known. Mm -hmm. uh, remember I was raised by a single mom and my mom was, my mom was so spectacular with this kind of stuff. I remember in high school, she took me and, like, all of my best friends out to dinner. Mm -hmm. 
And the whole goal of the dinner was I'm going to teach you how you're supposed to treat a lady. Right. And so, like, the whole point of the dinner was, like, this is how you, like, respectfully treat a woman on a date. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, it's like, that's that's what I was raised with. I, I was always raised with, uh, like, that kind of understanding and respect of of that kind of thing. Right. Um, but I think that for But me, a lot of guys aren't. Well, of course, a lot of guys right. aren't. For sure. But as we were talking about this stuff earlier, it was just kind of this reminder of how different our experiences are. And where my mind instantly goes is, like, what can I do? Right, right, like how I don't mean like how can we big picture change this issue, which obviously needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, like I would I would love if like the next generation of podcasters <laughs> weren't able to make this episode because things had so changed that this was not an issue. Right, but at the same time, I'm also a realist, <laughs> and I understand that like what I'm responsible for is like what I do. Yeah, and so so one of my questions to Sherry was like. Help me understand things that I, as a guy, can do to help this. Like, what are things that that I can do? Understanding that 50% of the world's population is probably walking through life with some of these things running through their mind. <laughs> right. And then here I am, like the guy, right. just like going through my life. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? I was just like, I was just going out for a walk. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but there's a woman 10 yards ahead of you for like the last two miles. I'm like, oh, I didn't notice. <laughs> You know what I mean? The whole she time did. she's, that's what I mean. <laughs> like in the whole time she's terrified. Right. And so, uh, and so a couple of things I want to say, the reality is, and Sherry talked a lot about this earlier. The reality is, is that the vast majority of, of guys in this world of men in this world are not there to cause harm. Right. right? This isn't a, all men are perpetrators. All men are violent. All men are going to cause harm. That kind of thing. Um, the problem though. We don't know who is and who isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you don't know who is and who isn't. And unfortunately, what has been proven over time is that there are enough who are that way mm -hmm. that, um, like, we, we just all, have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Right. And so, so for me, Sherry is a guy. Like, things that I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about this. Help me understand. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so we read, I think in an article and I hadn't thought about this one, but it's so smart. Um, crossing the street. If you're walking behind a woman, if it's possible, just go to the other side of the street. If you're both walking the same direction, you don't need to be following her directly. Well, that was, yeah. And, and that was so interesting to me. It said like, make sure is the guy that you're the one who alters your path so that she doesn't have to alter hers. Right. Right. And so it's like, if she's walking head on at you and it's night and it's dark and like, like cross the other side of the street. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like take a right and go around the block so that she, you know, that kind of <laughs> right. stuff. Like just, just do something to alter your path so she doesn't have to alter hers. Um, if you're walking and she's ahead of you and cause there's been times and I remember times in my life where it's like, you're not following somebody, but apparently you're just going similar directions. Right. It looks like you're following. And it looks like then, you're following right. somebody. And, and in that case, when it's not possible to like cross the street and kind of get out of range, I guess. Um, one of the things that we read was um, just to make your presence known. Mm -hmm. Like, get on your phone or jingle, jingle your, your keys. keys. Don't, or... like, walk and be, like, silent and, like, Right, because that's creepier. Like, totally. if you're trying to just, like, be super silent so she maybe doesn't notice you, that's red flags. Totally. Like, even though you're probably not. Right. Like, you're trying to be quiet so that she doesn't notice you so that it's not, like, a scary thing. But, like, mm -hmm. that actually makes it scarier. So, <laughs> make your presence known. Be loud. Be obnoxious. Be, you know, like, on your phone with a your friend, your wife, your whatever, you know, somebody like somebody. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, I, just make your presence known, mm -hmm. I think, but not threatening. I love that. What else? Um, this was something that you do a lot. Oh my gosh. And, this was so eye opening to me. Um, as we were talking about this, you were just like, what? Like yeah. that would never occur to me. So when you are in your car uh -huh. often in parking lots you will sit in your car mm -hmm. and be on your phone or um on a phone call or whatever but you're so specifically the phone calls like you have your airpods in so you're just talking yeah um and it 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 looks like you're just sitting in your car yeah so what so what i'll so what i'll do is like i'll be out for a drive or i'll be going somewhere and i'll get a phone call and i'll like pull into a grocery store parking lot mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna sit there and we're gonna finish this conversation um and so i just like I pay no attention to where I park. I just like pull into a spot. And it's so interesting that we had this conversation now because last week, this exact situation happened at Fred Meyer, right up the street from our house. Mm -hmm. And I pulled in 
And I parked near the back of the parking lot. It's kind of where you pull in. But there was a car to my left that I didn't see when I first pulled in. Or I didn't see there was somebody in it. And I pulled in there and there was a woman in the driver's seat. And there weren't a lot of cars around us. Because it's like the back of the parking lot. And I'm just on my AirPods just chatting away. And she's like just sitting in her car. And like for a while. And I'm just, you know just chit chatting <laughs> and she's just sitting there and then eventually she just drives off and I couldn't see if she was like on her phone or doing something but what you had said like as a woman mm-hmm. the way that makes you feel is it I don't know what your intentions are I don't know if you're sitting there waiting for me to get out of my car so that you can follow me or I don't know if you're if I'm walking up to my car if you're sitting there waiting for me so that you can follow me yeah. or um so that you can jump me or you know whatever like i don't know totally um and so there's just this dude sitting in his car that it just looks like you're waiting on something um literally have never thought about that (laughs) right i have because i've walked to my car where there's a dude sitting in the car right beside me and i'm just like (laughs) (laughs) get in lock the doors (laughs) (laughs) that's so helpful for me because like that's a practical thing i can do to put at least the does this change the whole like injustice no but you know what like for that woman who's in that car next to me <laughs> right. in that moment she feels safer mm-hmm. if i say you know what oh there's a woman's car next to me i'm gonna drive to another part of the parking lot right. and and have my conversation yep that kind of thing so that was helpful what other kind of stuff do we have um one of the things we put on here was speaking up with your peers this is a huge one this I'm gonna is gonna let you just take over here okay so this is this is my guys it's just us for the moment because this is one of the biggest things in this whole issue for me. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't want... Please don't hear what I'm about to say and take it political and tune out everything I'm about to say. <laughs> um, I had a significant, significant issue when um, a number of years ago, not that long ago, uh, former President Trump was... Basically, audio recordings came out of some things that he said that were uh, pretty honestly uh, significant slanders against women. And his response was, that's just locker room talk. When I heard that, I felt my blood start to boil. And I was like, that's the freaking problem. You know what I mean? Like, if if that's true, that's the problem. It shouldn't be locker room talk. Like, stop being a boy, grow a pair of balls, and be a man. And, like, stand up and say, this isn't what we should talk about. This isn't how we should treat women and talk about women and, and all of that. And so this whole idea of locker room talk is just absolute shit (laughs) like it's just absolute crap and this this to me is one of those like like men this is our issue to deal with um because we're the ones who are in those situations with guys in those situations with friends where things that are said go unchallenged and when something goes unchallenged what it does is it just continues that mindset that mentality and that belief to continue and so this whole idea of speaking up with friends, like, I think this is really important. And I understand the whole locker room talk mentality. I just think that that's what's wrong. Like, that's how we that's how we got here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's why girls feel like I can't walk home because I might get murdered. Right. Because, like, guys talk like that and that's normal. And then some guys take action on that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Eventually. And some of this, like this touches into my passion around the issue of human trafficking. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a big believer that, you know, human trafficking, it's interesting in the human trafficking world because you look at a lot of the leaders and a lot of the main voices in that world uh, and their their female voices, their women's voices trying to fight against this. And then I look at the reason human trafficking exists and it's because men buy sex. Right. Right. And so I'm just like, there's some point in this where like this ends when men get involved. Right. And it has to be the men who step in and say, this is not okay. This is okay. Because women can say it until they're blue in the face and men don't care. 100%. And so I think to me, like, this is one of those things that I think is like a challenge for like every guy mm-hmm. is just to say that uh, our quote unquote locker room talk has perpetuated a culture that women feel this way. Right. And that's just the truth. Now, here's the reality is that I could never have participated in any of this stuff, but based on my gender, like I have to deal with this and that's, you know, I don't care whether that's fair or not. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. You are never, you have never been out to 
assault or sure. harm women. But, That's not who you are. But, but because you are a man, yeah. in today's society, you have to stand up. With other men and say, this is not okay. With other men. And I think that that's the thing. Because I think that, I think it's as we challenge this kind of talk and this kind of mentality, um, I think that hopefully that's where people's minds change and that's where things change. And ultimately that's where, like culture changes one person at a time. Right. You know what I mean? It changes one relation at a time. And so to me, when we talk about like systemic change, the big picture change, uh, I think it's this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so like that whole like locker room talk, you guys, like my blood boiled at that. <laughs> I was like, that's exactly what's freaking wrong. Right. Like, this is the problem because it, it the... shouldn't be okay in the locker room Yeah. because it's okay everywhere else then. Yeah. It, and if, if a man justifies that kind of talk as locker room talk, you are part of the problem. Right. Like you are the reason this exists. You are the reason that women are getting assaulted. You are the reason that, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. You're playing a role in perpetrating this kind of culture that says this is okay. Regardless of whether you actually take action on any of that, you are still saying that it's okay by participating in that talk. 100%. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and so to me, like this is a guy's issue. So like that's my challenge, like guys that are listening is just this is not the fact that women feel this way isn't a problem for them to fix. <laughs> right. Like it's a problem for us to fix. Right. And and the other thing I'd say is that I don't want to diminish the fact that, like this does happen to guys too. It does. Yeah. You know what I mean? It certainly does. Um, but I think that when it comes to like the numbers of this, uh, obviously the reason we're talking about this is that Sherry has a unique perspective on this that I don't. And so I would just say that any conversation or language that um that reduces the image and value of a person or a gender that then allows others to assault them or diminish them or marginalize them mm -hmm. needs to end. Yep. Right? All right. Sorry. <laughs> I, I could talk about that topic for a hundred years. And I will say, when we do our toxic masculinity talk, yep. I'm going to... Um, There's going to be some heated heatedness <laughs> yeah oh, oh god like a hundred percent yep because i feel really passionate about this i think that this is one of the most to me this topic um feeds so many other societal ills yeah so okay yep i'm gonna have a drink of water and i'm gonna calm down <laughs> what, what's next um some other things that men can do um to help women feel safe is to give them personal space and i think this kind of goes back to the walking or um, if you're in a bar or a restaurant or wherever, um, specifically, you know, I guess I just think like if you're walking behind a woman, maybe stop, like let her get farther ahead so it doesn't look like you're following her. Um, or, you know, like Adam said, walk around the block, like do something to give her her space so that it doesn't seem like you're following her. Okay. Um, another thing is that no is a complete sentence. I, so I think <laughs> that, I think to me, um. So again, I worked in a bar. Um, I also was like, in my younger years, I also was like a party guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was out there doing all this stuff. And I remember um, what my perception, what it was, is that if a guy was out at a bar and a girl said no and wasn't that interested, but it was it was very rarely like a very firm no, almost because like there was like, it was almost like a no, I'm not in, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was almost like yeah. a, a passive no, but because... Because usually if women are very firm, they are um, called a bitch totally. or like you're just, you know, like you're too assertive. You're too whatever. Whereas for a guy to be an assertive is like, oh, what a good leader. Yep. But like if you're a woman who's assertive, like you're a bitch. Right. Totally. Right. And so like it was always passive. And I think that like a lot of guys aren't raised to know. I mean, we hear the phrase like no means no. But honestly, what I saw a lot of times was like no means like. You should barter. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> continue to negotiate, continue to try, continue to push, continue to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. And it's like, it's like, dude, like she's not interested. Like go away. Right. Don't you want to be with somebody who's actually interested in you? Go have another Jaeger bomb <laughs> and like wash your visor, bro. Right. Like, like, like what are you doing? Go away. So dumb. Right. Yep. And like, I've been in that situation where it's just like, ah, you know, I'm, no thanks. Like, I'm good. I'm with my girls. I'm with whatever. And, um. But that's not enough. But that's not enough. Like, it's, it continues to be a thing. And yeah. it's just like, you know, honestly, I am not assertive like that. Yep. Like, I'm not one to just be like, back off. No. Totally. Um, and so usually, like, this was, you know, in my like college kind of years, but like, if, if I just didn't 
feel like this guy was getting it, like, my girls and I would go somewhere else. And, like, that sucks. Like, to have to leave the place that you're at because this one dude won't leave you alone. Mm -hmm. You know, like, just... If if there's any hint of discomfort or, like, any hint of maybe no, just back off. Go away. Go find somebody who wants to be with you. (laughs) Because that one's not it. I think that, I think that to me, some of these things are, it's helpful to know, like, what are things as a guy to do, just like going through life, right? Just like, what are things like on a day to day that you can do? And it's interesting because on one hand, I, I don't know. And maybe I feel, I'd be curious to know. I wish there was, this is one of my gripes about podcasts. There's not a really good way to interact with people yeah. on podcasts. Um, because on one hand it's like, well, yeah, but don't punish the good guys for like bad guys, but Honestly, as a guy, as a good guy, as a, well, yeah, as a good guy now, but like, again, I haven't always been a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's be re- very clear about that. Yeah. Right. I have not always been that. I am now. Thank God. But like, <laughs> I appreciate that. But this is, this is not like my lifelong story. Right. Yeah. Um, like I became a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but for me, I feel a responsibility in this. And so I. I could be like, oh, well, you know what? Like, I'm not one of those guys anymore. And so for me, um, I, I'm not part of the problem. Right. Right. The reality is, is like, I might not have, I might not be a part of this problem right now, but like, it is my problem to deal with. Mm-hmm. And so, so I think that for me, that's, that's what I've been processing as we've been having this conversation. Like, what are the things in my life that I could change that help the women around me feel safer? Even things like, um... You know, uh, I, I think of when a friend leaves our house, if they've been over hanging out, just texting like, okay, I know she's supposed to be home in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Let's text in 20 minutes. Like, hey, just want to make sure you got home. Yep. You know what I mean? Or like, let me walk you out to your car as you leave. Yep. Or let me, like, what are ways that guys can, you know, can help? And so these are the kind of things that have been helpful to me because it gives me more tools in my tool belt. Super masculine reference. Uh, <laughs> more tools in my tool belt to know how to help. Yeah. Um. While at the same time realizing that this is this is such a big issue and such a significant issue that I may not be possible I may not be a part of like fixing this, mm-hmm. um, but I can number one admit that this is broken, admit that it's wrong, and say here are the things that I'm going to do as a man to try to fix this. Right, and uh, try to get other men to do the same. Well, and that's what I was just going to say, and I think that as one guy does that, um, and then another guy does that, and another guy does that, like mm-hmm. eventually it does snowball. Yeah, and I just, this kind of, I want to say it is not fair that the men who are not the problem are the ones that have to deal with this. It's not fair that you have to alter your behavior to make sure a woman feels safe. That's not fair. Um, But it's also not fair that I have to do all these things to keep myself safe because I don't know that you're not safe. 100%. Like, it's interesting to hear you say that, like, it's not fair that I have to, and to me... Like, I'm like, wait a second. I'm being asked to park in a different spot of the parking lot or to cross the street. And you're, like, checking mirrors and checking back seats and keeping keys in your hand and carrying mace and, like, covering your drink and checking your back seat. And you know what I mean? Like, wait a second. Like, let's not talk about fair in this situation. Right. (laughs) Fair goes out the window. This isn't a fair situation. The whole situation sucks. Yeah. Right? The whole situation sucks. And so the question for me is, like, okay, the situation sucks. How can we fix it? Right. What what part of the change can I be? And so, like, you've given me a number of things to consider that I hadn't considered before. Yeah. And that's super helpful. So, Sherry Beth, any any other final thoughts on this? And I know, like I said, I know that with with Sarah Everard's case, um, with her murder, there's mm-hmm. been tons of talk about this issue of woman safety. What can we as societies do? What can we as men do? What can can we just do to change this? Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think that, like you said, like culture change starts with one person Mm -hmm. and then the ripple effect of that. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I I don't think that you being the only guy in the world to not sit in your car and talk on the phone is going to make any difference. But if enough guys can start doing that, um, and make it a little more obvious who the bad guys are. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I think, mm-hmm. I think that that could be helpful. Well, and I think that, again, relating this to trafficking, um, I think the reality is, is that it might not, you know, one act that I do might not make a difference, 
I promise you to that woman who I was sitting in the car next to me made a difference. That's what I was just going to say. Like, like there's and, been so many times that like I go to cars or Fred Meyer and I'm, I will, I've moved my car like before I get out of it because I'm just not comfortable with this dude staring at me or, and he might not even be staring at me. He's probably on his phone, like just staring off into space, but it looks like he's looking at me and I'm not going to, I'm not going to park there. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it, that would make a difference if he saw me pull in if he was just like i'm just gonna go like yeah. I'm, you know i mean that kind of that kind of stuff i think would be is helpful well i appreciate you sharing like your thoughts and your experience on this it was helpful for me to listen to i mean not just like here recording this but but in the number of conversations we've had uh, mm-hmm. about this topic again i think it's i think it's really helpful um, and, and this, what's so interesting about this is that we could have this conversation on so many different topics. Yeah. We could have this conversation on racism. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To listen to the experience of another person that, that is different than mine mm-hmm. and to say like, man, like because of this, like you have to go through life differently. Right. You have to, you have to do things differently. Like help me understand what your experience is like. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is one thing that, that helps humanity is as we get a better a better understanding of each other's learned experiences Mm -hmm. and lived experiences and so so to me this has been helpful and hopefully as you guys have listened this has been helpful to you as well i think it's a really important conversation because i also think this is one of those things that the more we talk about it the more stigma goes away right a lot of times like things are hidden in the shadow when things go unsaid is where uh you know it there's this stigma that builds around them right and I think that to have the conversation, even just to say like, um, your experience as a as a young woman, your experience as a woman growing up, um, was different than mine. Here's what you had to experience, and like, why was it different? Right. And what can we do to change that? What can we do to change that for the next generation? Yeah. So thank you for sharing that with me, Sherry. Yeah. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, podcasts are difficult because there's not a good forum to interact. Um, you know, on YouTube. We post the video. You guys have the comment section Mm -hmm. to interact around, which I love. But here's one of the things that we're going to try. And this may change. I'm trying to find a space to interact around this kind of stuff. And so uh, for this week, and I I think I tried it last week as well, over on YouTube, we have what's called a community tab on our page. So if you go to the Leg Life page, you know, there's a place that says like videos and about and all that kind of stuff. One of the tabs is called community. I'm going to put up a graphic that's just about this week's topic mm-hmm. and basically ask you guys, like, let's let's dialogue and interact around that. Right. Do you guys have thoughts around this topic? Do you guys have uh, ideas or, or concerns or questions around this? So if you want to interact with us, we're going to try to do it over on the YouTube community tab on our Leg Life page. And the reason we're starting there is, like, obviously that's our biggest platform mm-hmm. and that's where our most amount of people are. And so we thought, you know what, let's let's try there. If it doesn't work, maybe we'll try somewhere else. But we do want to find a place where we as a podcast community can interact with each other. Yeah. Um, Especially on these kinds of topics. I just think that it's so important to um, be able to dialogue about this. 100%. This, this stuff matters. Mm-hmm. This is important. Um, and, and I think it's helpful for us to, to interact around that. The one thing I would say is remember, and this goes for every platform, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, podcast stuff. Uh, remember that we try to keep our, our comments and our interaction um, civil. We try to, you know, we don't uh, personally attack, right. you know, and on a topic like this, there could be heated um, feelings on both sides. But remember to approach even disagreement uh, with grace and remember that ultimately, like, we're here to win people, not arguments. Yes. And so... And I think also just remember that, you know, if somebody shares one of their personal experiences, you don't get to say that that's not their experience. I think that's so important. I think that's so important. And you don't get to say that their feelings are not valid. Yep. Because they are. Because they are. Yep. Right. That's exactly right. Good. That's a good word, Sherry. So friends, uh, I don't think we're going to ask our two questions at the end of today's podcast we always end with just because it doesn't feel, I don't know, it doesn't feel right to, <laughs> to end. I don't want to say it doesn't feel right to end on a high note, but I think to me, like, this is a serious topic and, mm-hmm. and I don't want to, I, I don't want to just like adjust quickly to like, oh, what's that making you happy this week? Right. Um, and so, so I would just say head over to the, to the YouTube community tab, uh, engage around this topic over there. And, uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope this has been, uh, at least eye-opening, enlightening. Maybe it's given you one additional thing to think about. Um, and, and again, maybe it moves the needle 
a, a little bit. I know for me, my takeaways are are the little things that I can do in life that uh, that I just naturally go through life thinking of my experience, not what the experience of the person that is in front of me is, mm-hmm. right? And so I pull into a parking lot and there's a woman in the car next to me and I don't even think like, what is that? You know, what does she think of with mm-hmm. that? Um, you know, walking down a street, not even thinking about, you know, how am I too close to her? Does she know that I'm here? Does she, um, you know, it, does she know that you're not threatening? That's right. And <laughs> right. so, and so it's given, this has given me things that I can do to help. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. So Sherry Beth, thank you for that. Yeah. And friend, Thanks for being willing to chat about this. I think it matters. I think that again, if we don't talk about this stuff, nothing ever changes. Right. You know? Yeah. That's so we have to, we have to, we have to talk about it. So I'm not sure when the toxic masculinity um, conversation will happen. Yeah, it's um, in our notes. We want we want it to happen. I will probably have to have a few drinks before that, just to, <laughs> just to calm my nerves, or else I might just I might just explode. Well, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but it'll be great. Yeah. Friends, thanks so much for listening. We love you guys so much, and we will see you next week on the Leg Life Podcast.